Hello and welcome to the series of lectures on OCI networking. Now the very first thing that we study in OCI networking is something known as a virtual cloud network and sometimes we call it as a VCN as well. So what is a virtual cloud network? Now if you are actually starting your journey towards cloud and you are new to uh, this whole um, architecture of OCI and you just want to understand the very basics of VCN, um, how I would uh, say is we, we could just simply divide these words. So first of all it is virtual right so it is it is a network first of all remember it is a private network now this network is not a physical network but a virtual network right and uh, and it is it is basically a network which is sitting inside your cloud so it's a cloud network but which is virtual in nature and again think of it as uh, i would normally say that it is your private address space now let's say you um, you have taken uh, or created a uh, tenancy in OCI and you need to um, create let's say a, a VM cluster, you need to create a database. So for all that you need to have some kind of IP address space and that private IP address space is known as a VCN or virtual cloud network. So let's start with it right. So it is a private network. So first of all, it's not a public network. It is a private network. It is virtual in nature. It is not a physical network. And as I said, it offers a private isolated network environment in the OCI. So you can think of it as like every um, customer would have its own VCN and it is isolated from each other or even within your tenancy, you can create multiple VCNs and those would be isolated from each other. So that's why we say it is a private isolated network environment within your OCI. And quite important, it is customer customizable IP address. So it is just an IP address space. As 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 I as I said earlier, it is basically an IP address space, right? You are just giving a range of IPs. Basically, with this, we just simply give a range of IPs that okay, this is my range. And how do you define? You define something like ten dot. 0.0.0 slash 16 and this is uh, what we call as a CIDR notation because it's slash 16 it means that the first two octets are actually reserved for the network portion and rest are your host portion right. So it means that any um, network or the sub networks that you can create out of it would be 10.0.1.0 or 2.0 right we, we, we can uh, understand that part. So for the moment you just understand that it is a customer customizable IP address. So users can select their own IP address range using the IP4 CIDR block. So this is a kind of a CIDR block that we just studied right. Now um, it's quite important that we need to understand the concept of subnet. Now this is your IP address space right 10.0.0.16. Um, uh, uh, now what you can do is uh, out of this IP address space because uh, this uh, covers a number of computers so what we do is we can create multiple subnets. So if you see here we have created a subnet A and we have created a subnet B and this was our VCN. So this is our VCN. So if, if you if you look at this diagram uh, as you can see here this VCN is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 right. This is the first part right you are defining your IP address space. Now within that IP address space you could have multiple subnets. Subnet as a name suggests sub network right. It's sub network right. So you are creating multiple networks out of this one VCN and so you can think about it like you could have a private subnet, you could have a public subnet or you could have multiple subnets as well right. So and, and how do we do this as I said that the first two um, octets are reserved for the network portion so obviously the the subnet that you can have is would be 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Now when I do 24 it, 8 times 3 is 24 so which means that the first three uh, here bits are actually or octets are reserved for the uh, network portion and this is your host portion. So anything uh, or any say uh, the VNIX or, or the instances that you create would, would have an IP address like 10.0.1.0 say 3 10.0.1.0 
1.45 going on up to say 255 right same way we can have another subnet called 110.0. as i said the first two are reserved for network so it could be 2.0 slash 24 right perfect so now i've created two subnets as you can see this is my subnet a and this is my subnet b if we uh, take example of the um, diagram that is given here so let's let's see what it says so say users can segment their vcn into subnets which can be either regional subnet or it could be ad specific subnet now quite important when oci um, uh, started uh, like even when gen 1 and gen 2 or uh, even within gen 2 what you used to happen was when you used to create an availability domain you used to create a ad specific subnet right so as the, this is called limited to single availability domain but now oracle recommends that you should be having a regional subnet which spans all the availability domains so you just simply define a subnet and that subnet is a regional uh, subnet which uh, goes across all the availability domains so if you say, again take an example of a subnet a if you see it's available on ad1 and ad2 so this is a regional subnet which is available across availability domains um, next comes the concept of security list. So you can think about um, the security and this is quite an important artifact of um, VCNs and we will see uh, when we do the demo. Uh, security list is nothing but a virtual firewall. So it controls what traffic is going in and out. So we call it ingress, right? The traffic that is coming in and egress the traffic that is going out, right? So you define the rules based on this. So it could be that you want to uh, have, uh, let's say, okay, to, to understand this, you could see that you have uh, something in private subnet, right, a database server, and this is your public subnet. And you just want that this compute instance, so this VM should only be allowed to access this database, right? No one else should be allowed to access this database directly, right? So you will de definitely define some kind of ingress and egress rules. And this is what we call security list. We will understand this in more detail when we touch the security list topic, right? For the moment, you can see that uh, this security list is, is just, um, you can have a default security list when you create your VCN or you can create your own custom security list as, as well. And this is actually defined at the subnet level, right? Um, then we have a concept of routing tables, right? So any traffic that is flowing within the VCN is fine. But if you to go out of the VCN, like if you have to uh, go to on-prem uh, or you have to connect from one VCN to another VCN, or you have to uh, connect from your on-prem to internet. So obviously you would need some routing tables, right? So um, it is, um, so, uh, so routing table defines how the traffic is routed within the VCN or to the external destinations, right? So it's quite important, we, we call route tables. We will again understand uh, this in, um, uh, in the next uh, upcoming lessons. So now we'll talk about few gateways that are very important. So if you ask me, uh, what is a gateway? A gateway is a network node, right? Or you can think about it like a router, uh, which is used in telecom that connects two networks with different transmission protocols together. Now you can think of a gateway that you're going from one place and going out, because if you think about a gateway like a gate, so you're going out and going in a new space somewhere, right? So gateways serve as an entry and exit point. That's why I always say, think about a gateway like a gate. So a, like a gate has an entry and exit point. So a gateway serves as an entry and exit point for network as all the data must pass through or communicate with the gateway prior to, to being routed. Okay. So Internet Gateways offers a path for network um, uh, traffic between the VCN and the public internet. Now there could be a, a, a chance that um, you have created um, an instance here or and you want this instance to be connected uh, or this is a VM instance and you want this to be connected to the internet directly, right? So if you want to connect from within OCI to internet, you would obviously have to go via the internet gateway. That's quite important. Right? 
right? So it offers a path for network traffic between the VCN and the public internet. So if you see, we have, um, so you are on this VCN and from this VCN, you need to have a path to the internet gateway or to the internet and that is done through internet gateway. Now, there is another form of gateway which we called a NAT gateway, right? So a NAT gateway allows instances and in private subnet to initiate outbound connection to the internet without exposing their public IP address space. Now the best way to understand a NAT gateway is to think about like about a database server, right? Let's say you have this database server which is sitting in a private subnet. Now, obviously, uh, uh, it is a database server and you would don't want anybody on internet to actually access this directly, right? You want to avoid that. But if you ask me, there could be certain requirements where you need to download the patches, right? So you probably have to download patches. Now, if you have to download the patches, you have to download the patches from the internet, right? This is your internet. So, first of all, I said from internet, you shouldn't be able to directly reach my um, uh, this database server, but this database server needs to download the patches, right? So that is where we uh, uh, get into a NAT gateway because a NAT gateway allows an instance in a private subnet to initiate outbound connection. So if you see, it is not an inbound, I'm going out, right? I am calling uh, uh, the uh, download of patches. So it is an outbound connection to internet without exposing the private IP address. So from internet, nobody can reach me, but I am allowed to reach the internet to download patches through NAT gateway. Uh, then we have a concept of service gateways. Um, so service gateways, uh, there are certain services, especially OCI services, something like an object storage, right? So if you have to access the object storage, um, uh, so it provides access to the Oracle services within same region without traffic traversing the public's internet, right? So you would go via a service gateway if you need access from your VCN to uh, say the object storage, right? Or there are other services, OCI services, uh, where you don't want to traverse the public internet, but you want to still access the OCI services. Next important kind of gateway is dynamic routing gateway, and we also call it a DRG. Now, again, uh, there are quite a few scenarios uh, in which you would be using a dynamic routing gateway somewhere uh, uh, sitting here. Uh, so a dynamic routing gateway, it facilitates the connection between VCN and on-prem network. Now, think about it that this is your OCI region, but uh, here, if you if you actually think about it, that you are uh, an on-prem, uh, say your, your data. So this is, um, let's say in London and your data center is somewhere over here. This is your DC, right? All your applications, application servers are here <clears throat> and probably you wanna to connect to certain from your applications you want to connect or your users have to connect. So obviously they need to have a network connectivity from on-prem uh, to uh, the uh, to, to this Oracle Cloud uh, network um, interface, right? Or OC, uh, OCI region. Now for doing that, there is this router or a gateway, which we call the dynamic routing gateway. Now it has mm, several use cases. So it facilitates the connection between VCN and on-prem network, right? As I said, uh, that you are here, uh, this is your DC, you want to connect from your data center to uh, OCI, obviously you need a dynamic routing gateway. The other use case is uh, connecting to another VCN. Now this is, uh, let's say VCN1, in the same way, within this region, you could have a VCN2 as well, right? Now, if you want to connect VCN1 to VCN2, obviously you need to go via a dynamic routing gateway, right? So always remember, dynamic routing gateway or DRG is something where you are going out of your VCN into other areas, right? You are going from your uh, VCN onto another VCN, or you're going from your VCN to on-prem network, or even if you have to connect to other cloud vendors, like you have to connect to Azure, AWS, right? So for that also, you need to have a dynamic routing gateway. Now, um, we also have something called a local peering gateway, which allows connection of one VCN to another in the same region, right? 
So uh, th that's quite important uh, because if you have a VCN1 and uh, say in one region, so we are in region, let's say uh, London, EU London 1, you can call it, and you created another VCN uh, in London, which is VCN2. So to connect between two VCNs, you need a uh, LPG or a local peering gateway, right? So this is, uh, it is, it allows the connection of one VCN to another, but important point is in the same region, right? Because we'll have another one, which is called a ro lo uh, remote peering connection, which connects LPGs across region. Now to understand this, this was London. And let's say you have a US region, right? Something like um, Ashburn, you uh, say Ashburn uh, one and uh, US Ashburn one, and you again have something like a VCN three. So, so bit, and if you want to connect from VCN one to VCN three, here you would be needing a remote peering connection. So, please remember for the exam, if you're talking about a local peering gateway because it's local, you are in the same region, right? But when we are talking about remote, remote is means that it is not uh, local, but out. So here you're talking about <clears throat> remote peering connection, say from UK to US, just giving an example, right? So this is remote peering connection, right? Um, next one is another security construct called network security group. Now the thing with um, what we understood with security list was that it provides a virtual firewall. Um, but the thing is that it is at defined at subnet level. Now, uh, if uh, this um, security list is defined at subnet level, and let's say I uh, create two, three instances, instance one, instance two, instance three, instance four, like, and these are my VM clusters, or you can call it my computes. Now, just think about it that all these have the same security posture, right? Why? Because the ingress rules and egress rules are all defined at subnet level. So anything uh, that I'm creating, any cluster that I'm creating or any compute nodes I'm creating within this subnet will automatically have to follow the rules of that subnet. That is where Oracle came up with something called a NSG. Now, the beauty about NSG is it that it allows this security constructs to be done at VNIC level. Now, if you do at the VNIC level or um, VNIC is not, nothing but virtual uh, network interface cloud. Um, so if you do it at the VNIC level, then uh, the best thing is that you can define a different set of um, uh, ingress egress rules for different VMs, right? For this, it could have uh, something as this one, something as this one, this could have this security construct, this could have this security construct. So what I want to say is that a network security group offers a virtual firewall, like right? something like what we studied with security list. So it's a virtual firewall for a set of resources within the same VCN. So if you see, I'm still within the same VCN, allowing the users to define ingress and egress rules based on IP protocol which is source destination IP address and port, right? But the thing is that you are not no longer um, actually dependent on your subnet rules, but you can define your own rules at the VNIC level, very important. So it is the uh, virtual network interface card, uh, which is VNIC, uh, ju just like we have NICs and uh, normal computers, which is network interface card. So this is a VNIC. So you define rules at a VNIC level rather than at the subnet level. So um, I think it was a pretty long lecture, but all I want to uh, make sure is that you get a good understanding of what is a VCN. A VCN is nothing but a, um, a virtual cloud network, which offers you a private isolated network. And then we studied that it is nothing but a customizable uh, IP address space where you're just giving a range of IPs. And then within that range, you are creating your subnets, right? Um, you're saying, okay, this subnet is my private subnet or public subnet. And what would be the, again, uh, you define the CIDR block or the range. Uh, then we studied about routing tables, internet gateways, NAT gateways, service gateways. These are all the important concepts, uh, what, you, what you know to need to know as part of a VCN. Thanks for watching.